This week is the Epic Camel Block. Um, and we're making three of them and you can personalize them. We're going to talk about that as well here. So um, th that is week three. We can also make them in a couple different ways. So, well, or sorry, week seven. <sighs> My name is Jennifer Long from Be So Inspired, Transitioning to Sew a Story and so grateful to have you here with us. Um, the techniques that we're using for the camel block are techniques that we've already used in this sew along. So they are the straight sewing <laughs> that's always wonderful um hst so half square triangles and we're doing the half rectangle um triangles as well and you can use the technique that best that best works for you so um i shared my technique for for this one that i use for my ba patterns but there's a lot of different techniques out there so um again i'm happy for you to use the, the technique that works best for you all right so there are three camels in the camel block so you've grabbed your fabric for the camels this is the last week and as you can see the camels and their bodies are all identical they're all facing the same direction because they're all following the star um, over to bethlehem but what is different is their um, saddles here and so are their quilts <laughs> quilts if you will over um that they are wearing over their backs on the saddles where you would sit. So um, we have a star inside. Now, we didn't do this, um, but you can fussy cut in here. So you can use, um, let me just grab this. You can use any of the prints if you have extra fabrics. Um, maybe we don't really use it too much here, but if you want to take that toss print and fussy cut in there, you know, it's just a small little square just to add a little bit. Um, that is great. You can absolutely do that um, in there. The points of the stars are all the same uh, as is the frame of the, the saddle or the quilt. And then the, the base of them are a different color. So once you've made one, um, you can make them all. They have a lot of small pieces, so we will say that. So um, a tip and trick about this is, I actually like to use starch. Um, I don't know what how everybody feels about starch. You can leave it in the comments if you like, but um, a spray a spray and starch I really like before I iron. Actually, I sometimes even use it before I cut, um, or I can just re-measure, especially on some of the tiny pieces, and then you get super accurate um, piecing um, and sewing. <clears throat> but definitely. Um, not trying to cut corners and not press. Sometimes, you know, you're just like, oh, I think I could just roll this one out. I would recommend pressing. Pressing open helps you get the most accurate because it's not pulling the fabric in any direction and also being aware of your seam allowance. So <clears throat> an exact quarter inch seam allowance is how the pattern is built. If you like to sew with a scant um, quarter inch seam allowance, or you're going a little bit over, um, you know, you can see it more with small pieces. So just be aware of that um, when you're sewing. Take your time uh, if you're not used to sewing with small, smaller pieces. And um, just do, like I said, open seams and lots of pressing. Those are my tips and tricks for the camel, <laughs> for the camel block on there. So we do use, um, a half rectangle triangle. Sorry, I was looking at the back. <laughs> I was looking at my piecing on the back just so I could see. Um, the half rectangle triangle um, over here a little bit. Otherwise, everything else is just a stitch and flip and, and matching your points. When I pin, I've used this um, lots of times before and talked about it um, on my YouTube channel quite often, is I stick the pin through the pieces exactly where I want it to go. So I take one pin and I stick it in exactly where I want it to go. But I don't, I push it through both, but it's still standing straight up. Then I take a second pin and use that to hold it there. But I keep that tall one there. So when I sew it through, then I can keep that point exactly as even pull this um, when that's just holding the fabrics together away, but I keep that pointed one in my fabric until it gets right where the needle needs to go. And I get perfect seams all of the time. And that is um, a really great trick. I actually learned it um, from a guild that I was in like, I don't know, a decade ago or more. So um, that is a great, great, great trick for sewing points that don't shift. You know, when you've put your pin in to both 
both points and you're like, I pinned it exactly, I took the time. But then you pull it in and you put the pin this way, it shifts that top fabric over just slightly and it can still shift and move. And so that's where that, if you, if you think that your points are ever like one stitch off, that could possibly be the reason why. It could also be lots of different things, but that could possibly be the reason why. So um, having that one pin stay standing nice and tall, um, right where your intersection is going to be, when you have the other pin to hold the fabric from shifting is really like your extra security, especially when you're sewing like lots of tiny fabrics that um, don't have the same kind of, um, maneuverable maneuverability and giveaway so you can just see here for example on the foot you can just see how that point lines up exactly there and um, it's a very 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 small piece yeah so here's another point like you can just see all of them there so um it's just really fun now you don't have to have perfect points i've seen some great 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 reels which is feeling so liberating liberating sorry um, on Instagram and in different places, TikTok and things, um, of people just going, you know, those points are meant to be like, um, free. And, you know, I feel the same way. No one else, but, um, but you and I that are sewing our own work, we'll see. But, you know, my husband is not going to look at this and go, oh, that point is not exactly so um i know we want perfection all the time as i do too and um but just just give yourself grace if especially if you're not used to some of these techniques or you're not used to sewing um, with really small pieces but using those tips and tricks starch press seams open double pinning technique tall and side um, are all going to be like game changers i really strongly believe that for you so um, that is the camel week. I just wanted to share with you that, you know, I love pillows. <laughs> you can make this block into uh, pillows too. And I made a set of three because, you know, we need three camels. <laughs> Why not? Um, so but I made a set of three camel pillows and it's just such a fun way to um, take this quilt to the sort of the next level and decorate your whole home um, with the story of the nativity. So this is that week three block at the bottom. We are on page 37 starting now for week seven and then next week we're gonna bring it all together. So I can't wait to see you for next week. Um, I've been, it's been a pleasure, a pleasure to be part of this journey, this so a story journey together with you. Um, I appreciate it so much if you liked this video, if you subscribed to the YouTube channel, if you came over and joined our private Facebook group. Um, but I've explained it before. Most importantly, it's just so fantastic if you're on the website because that is our platform where we share all the things. Um, and um, that's sort of what we call our family on the website. So it's, um, it's like our home. Um, thank you so much for being here and I appreciate you so much. Have a lovely, lovely week. And I'll see you next week for the finale. All right. Have fun sewing the greatest gift, camel blocks. See you soon.